Anomalous aortic origin of coronary arteries it has been reported as one of the important classification. We have uh, two categories in this classification. We have a low risk aortic uh, anomalous, and then we have a high risk uh, aortic anomalous of the coronary artery. One of the examples is the left coronary artery from right sinus of Valsalvin, about 20%, similar to this group here. And then the other uh, subcategory is the right coronary artery from the left sinus in about 25%. And then a uh, majority of cases uh, due to uh, circumflex from the right sinus uh, of Valsalva. Uh, 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 and then we have a rare abnormality in which we have inverted uh, coronary arteries. Um, uh, we have, a high, as we mentioned, we have a high risk when the uh, coronary artery is lying in between the two great arteries, which will lead to ischemia during exercise uh, uh, for athletes. So example of a single uh, right coronary artery here, as we can see in this example, so this is the right coronary artery and then this is the left uh, coronary artery is coming out of the uh, uh, right side uh, and then uh, with further imaging you can see that this is the left main uh, coronary artery is coming out of the uh, right side so this patient has a single uh, right coronary artery actually this patient presented with uh, coarctation of the aorta and when we took the patient for cardiac catheterization as a treatment for his uh, coarctation, we did angiogram to look at the uh, ascending aorta here and to look at the coronary artery abnormalities. And you can see here at the beginning of the injection, the uh, left, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery as are coming from uh, the same side. And this is the lateral imaging. You can see that the uh, this is the right and the left uh, coronary arteries are coming from uh, one uh, origin. So this patient has single right coronary artery in addition to his uh, coarctation of the aorta. This is a nice CT scan to see uh, that this patient has a single uh, coronary artery in which the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery is coming out of the uh, same uh, coronary artery in this case. Uh, and then uh, this is similar view. Uh, this patient has a left and right coronary arteries are coming from the same uh, sinus. Then we have anomalies of uh, coronary artery uh, ostium. Uh, this patient has a severe aortic valve stenosis in which uh, he went for OR to uh, relieve his uh, aortic stenosis. Also, we noticed that there is increased turbulence at the origin of the right uh, coronary artery as well as the left coronary arteries. So this patient has a severe uh, osteal stenosis and then this is with the color you can see that there is a severe osteal stenosis in this patient which was not really uh, amenable uh, for surgical correction. So this is TE showing that there is osteal stenosis for this uh, coronary artery which is the right coronary artery and also here this is uh, TE for the same patient showing that there is a significant osteal stenosis at this uh, coronary artery. Another uh, important abnormality of the coronary arteries is the uh, anomalies of termination. And then we can see uh, coronary artery fistulas with this uh, classification. Uh, it is estimated it is about one, one in 50,000 uh, population. Right coronary artery is more common than the left coronary artery in terms of fistulas. And the fistula usually uh, connect to the right heart structures, i.e. to the right ventricle or to the right atrium and to lesser extent to the pulmonary tract. Uh, 
we can notice that in about 80% of these patients, they are asymptomatic. And this is a beautiful uh, imaging of the, uh, the aorta. You can see this is the right coronary artery dilatation, and this is the fistula termination into the uh, right ventricle. So we'll start with the, this patient here. This is a six months old who is a known case of uh, fenestrated atrial uh, septal defect. And he's coming for uh, uh, follow up. So what do we notice here that uh, this is the aorta here and this is the left coronary artery which, look, which looks like a normal size and caliber. But when you look carefully here at this area, you will find that this is a dilated uh, origin of the right coronary artery. So here, this is the aorta in cross-section, and this is the proximal part of the right coronary artery, and actually it is really dilated, the right coronary artery. And this is with the color, you can see this is a severe dilatation of the right coronary artery, and there is turbulence towards the atrium, to the, towards the right atrium. So here this is subcostal view showing that huge coronary artery fistula uh, originating from the right coronary artery here into the right atrium. And then with a further modification, you can see that the fistula is jetting into the right atrium. So this is the right atrium here, which is dilated. This is a chest x-ray of the same patient showing that the right border of the heart is actually uh, deformed because of the uh, fistula for this patient. So this patient was taken for uh, angiogram as well as interventional uh, treatment for his uh, fistula. And you can see there is a first injection in the ascending aorta showing that the right coronary artery is dilated and then we can see that there is opacification of the right atrium. So this patient has a fistula between the right coronary artery and the right atrium. This is selective angiogram to the right coronary artery which is a normal in caliber and distribution. And you can see proximal to that there is a, a huge fistula. So uh, the fistula was um, uh, entered from the right atrium and then there is a vascular plug which is inserted to the fistula and then we have a testing an angiogram to the fistula to see if it's closed or not and this is after release. You can see there is a normal flow into the right coronary artery with the fistula is uh, closed by this vascular blood. So this is the same patient mm. with the uh, right coronary artery to the right uh, atrium fistula. This is transubgeal echo. Uh, this is a mid-subgeal view, one, uh, around 140 degrees, showing the uh, left atrium, left ventricle, and the left ventricular outflow tract. This is the right coronary artery origin here, which is uh, slightly dilated. But when we do further manipulation, uh, you can see that there is a dilated uh, right coronary artery here. And you can see that this is the right coronary artery with the abnormal course in towards the right atrium. And when you look carefully to the right atrium, there is uh, some masses here of, on the right side. And this is the corresponding color. You can see the flow into the fistula and then it is jetting into the uh, right atrium. But look at this uh, masses on the right atrium. So this is the exit of the fistula into the uh, right atrium and right at right opposite to the fistula you can see there is a lot of these masses and actually this patient has a vegetations on the right atrium uh, due to uh, the fistula. So the fistula in this case was not a benign fistula. The patient had um, uh, endocarditis for which the patient has to go for surgical repair and removal of these uh, vegetation. This is the three-dimensional echocardiography 
uh, showing there's a lot of mass of uh, vegetation and this is the fistula uh, and this is the mouth into the uh, right atrium this is another view for this uh, fistula and the vegetation by three-dimensional uh, echocardiography this is another patient with the fistula uh, from the uh, right coronary artery here to the uh, pulmonary artery and then this is the uh, patient this is the right coronary artery to the pulmonary artery fistula uh, the same patient had the angiogram and you start to see there is a fistula here towards the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery is opacified by the injection in the aortic root and the lateral view showing that this is the right coronary artery and this is the fistula towards the to the pulmonary artery so this is how the uh, angiogram uh, of the coronary arteries will delineate the abnormalities for us this is another case in which we can see that the left coronary artery is dilated and then uh, there is communication from the left coronary artery towards the uh, coronary sinus so this is left coronary artery to coronary sinus uh, fistula and you can see this is the left uh, this is the fistula to the coronary arteries uh, to the coronary sinus and then it is jetting towards the right atrium one of the important association between coronary artery abnormalities and congenital heart disease is what we see in pulmonary atresia with intact interventricular septum this is a rare form of a complicated uh, congenital heart disease uh, the incidence is around 1% of all congenital heart disease and it has a high uh, long-term mortality as you can see here in this uh, curve is the uh, uh, high mortality as you go in, in years there is a uh, ventricular coronary arterial uh, connections in which you have uh, communication between the right uh, ventricle and the coronary arteries and this connection can be variable in size and this is anatomy uh, slide showing that this is the right ventricular cavity and there is connection between the right ventricular cavity and the coronary arteries this is an interesting patient in which we have here a patient with the pulmonary atresia uh, intact ventricular septum as you can see the right ventricle here is diminuted with a small rv cavity uh, the patient overall has a reasonable uh, left ventricular function Uh, his first echo showed that there is a high possibility of fistula formation between the uh, coronary arteries and the uh, right ventricle, the diminuted right ventricle. And you can see here in this Doppler, uh, there is a diastolic flow in the coronary artery. So the patient was uh, taken for OR for a BT shunt. And uh, after BT shunt, the patient uh, could not come off pump and uh, for this reason he was put on ECMO this is his echo on ECMO with a reduced ventricular function the patient was taken to cardiac catheterization to see what what is the uh, etiology for this uh, deterioration uh, and to delineate, to delineate uh, by cardiac catheterization the uh, coronary artery fistula communications as you can see here there is an injection in the right ventricle which showed there is multiple connection with the uh, coronary artery and uh, these connections and fistulas they have uh, multiple stenosis in the course of uh, the coronary artery and uh, this is still image showing the same finding here and there is a uh, multiple stenosis and this is another view showing that there is a fistula between the right ventricle and the uh, coronary artery and it has uh, stenosis so this patient has uh, one form of uh, coronary artery uh, RV dependent coronary artery circulation and the patient deteriorated after cardiac uh, bypass it can cause also uh, fistula formation between the uh, 
are the cavity and the coronary artery and uh, this can be in betwe between the right coronary artery or it can be uh, through the the left coronary, coronary artery uh, in this case we have uh, the left anterior descending coronary artery connection to the right ventricle and this is uh, anatomy or morphology specimen showing a huge fistula formation between the LAD and the right ventricular uh, apex. Another uh, anomalies associated uh, with uh, coronary artery is the anomalies associated with different congenital heart disease. Uh, as we mentioned before, it can be associated with the tetralogy of the load, transposition, corrected TGA, double outlet right ventricle, uh, and the rest of uh, congenital anomalies. We will uh, look at a few of these. So uh, in tetralogy of Fellow, there is an incidence of about 2.5 to 9% abnormalities on the uh, coronary arteries. Uh, here is the normal uh, coronary arteries with a small coronal branch. Uh, in other cases, you can have a prominent or large coronal branch, but the left system is normal. Uh, one important abnormality is the anomalous uh, LAD from the right coronary artery and sometimes you will have uh, dual LED supply. Uh, in some patients, you will have a single right coronary artery uh, or a single uh, left coronary artery. Uh, this is a patient, normal uh, left coronary artery is coming from the uh, aorta here. And this patient also has a normal right coronary artery from the aorta. In this case, we have a small coronal branch coming out of the uh, right coronary artery. This is another patient with large coronal branch coming out of the uh, right coronary artery. Uh, we have to keep in mind that the left coronary system is normal. This is another patient with also prominent uh, coronal branch coming out of the right coronary artery. This is an unusual case of uh, tetralogy of fellow. So this patient has a large ventricular septal defect with overriding of the aorta uh, and all the features of uh, tetralogy of fellow. Here we have this patient, uh, right ventricular outflow tract with a severe uh, valvular and subvalvular stenosis. But we noticed that there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, signal here on the right ventricular uh, outflow tract uh, in which we uh, think about coronary artery abnormalities or fistula formation of the uh, coronary arteries then when we look carefully into the uh, coronary artery this is the aorta here this is the pulmonary artery we can see that the left coronary artery is coming out of the pulmonary artery with the all reversed flow uh, pattern so this patient has uh, Al-Kappa al in addition to Tetralogy of Fellow, uh, which is really a rare case uh, in our center. The importance of coronary artery in Tetralogy of Fellow, not only uh, for surgical repair, but for future percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. And we can see here that uh, in patients with uh, severe pulmonary valve regurgitation, we are implanting melody valve or Edward uh, valve into the right ventricular outflow tract. But uh, before implantation of the uh, uh, melody valve, uh, we have to do uh, injection in the uh, ascending aorta to look at the uh, left coronary artery. And then after that, we inflate the balloon in the right ventricular outflow tract and make sure that there is no compromise to the left coronary artery uh, flow. So here, uh, the first injection showing normal left coronary artery flow. And here, after inflation of the balloon in the right ventricular outflow tract, we can see that the, um, the left coronary artery uh, flow is diminished or compressed. So this patient is not suitable for percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. Uh, this is an interesting case of uh, aortopulmonary uh, window 
this is the pulmonary artery and this is the aorta and this patient has a large uh, AP window and then with the color flow here you can see that the uh, when there's a communication between the aorta and the pulmonary artery and there is some uh, turbulence in the right ventricular outflow tract so the, this patient has a large window in between the uh, the pulmonary artery and the aorta then uh, as an association we have to make sure that this patient has no uh, abnormalities so here we can see uh, the left coronary artery is coming nicely from the aorta but here the right coronary artery is not really coming out of the uh, right coronary sinus uh, and then when we look carefully the uh, right coronary artery is, is coming towards the pulmonary artery and the, in this still image you can see the right coronary artery is crossing over and coming out of the pulmonary artery so this patient has anomalous right coronary artery from the pulmonary artery associated with uh, AP window this is a post-operative uh, view showing that the uh, the right coronary artery is coming normally from the uh, pulmonary artery after reimplantation. Uh, coronary artery abnormalities in the transversion of the great arteries is very important and it needs separate uh, lecture, but we will uh, speak about a postoperative arterial switch iatrogenic coronary artery anomalies in which if you in which uh, complex coronary artery anatomy can lead to complex uh, repair which might lead to coronary artery uh, dysfunction and uh, decrease perfusion to the uh, left or right uh, ventricle so these patients post arterial switch they need uh, careful evaluation of the coronary arteries uh, during uh, routine follow up so this patient, uh, after one year of complex arterial switch, uh, presented with depressed left ventricular function. So this is apical for chamber, showing depressed left ventricular function. And then a short axis view here, showing depressed left ventricular function. So we took the patient for uh, coronary artery angiography. So this is the first injection, showing the uh, abnormal uh, left coronary artery uh, perfusion you can see there is a uh, stenosis at the uh, left coronary artery and then on the lateral view there is stenosis of the left coronary artery while the right coronary artery is actually uh, normal so this patient has a major left coronary artery stenosis postoperative uh, complex arterial switch repair this is uh, MR angiography showing delayed enhancement of gadolinium in which signify there is ischemia to this part of the myocardium due to coronary artery abnormalities in conclusion coronary arteries anomalies are important cause of mortality and morbidity suspicion and evaluation are important Invasive and non-invasive cardiac imaging are feasible for coronary arteries. Delineation of coronary arteries required in any patient undergoing cardiac surgery for any congenital heart disease. Thank you for listening.